was loving it. I think every time I come to Old Trafford, um, I've always said it, it's one of my favourite places to play. You know, it's, it's an amazing stadium. Um, and Declan Rice, everybody. He's a player who last year I thought was a bit overhyped, if I'm being completely honest. I thought he was a player who was overpriced, if I'm being completely honest. But I've got to tell you, I, after watching him for the last few months, after watching him quite closely at Euro 2020, I think it's about time we have a conversation about how Declan Rice genuinely could be the perfect midfield signing for Manchester United. In this video, I'm going to take a look at all of Declan Rice's stats, see exactly where his strengths and his weaknesses are. We all know them if we've watched a bit of him this season, but it's good to run through them. I'm going to compare him to McTominay and Fred, see where he would fit inside this system. I'm then going to compare him to the Premier League's best. That's Kante, that's Rodri, and that's Fabinho. The top three teams, their best players in that position that Manchester United don't have a strength in. And then we're going to take a look at how he fits inside this United team. Before I do start this video, please would you consider subscribing to United People's TV, going down there, hitting subscribe, hitting that notification bell as well, making sure you get a ping every time a video goes live here on United People's TV like this one so you won't miss it. But let's jump into this one and let's start talking about that man there, Declan Rice. Now, how impressed have you been by Declan Rice this season? For me last year, as I said, I just thought it was a case of the English tax, the Premier League tax, the Man United tax, putting an 80 to 100 million pounds label on Declan Rice. But having watched him at Euro 2020 and having watched him a lot quite closely this season, because I know we're so heavily linked with him, he was considered Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's top target in that position. And I still think he is top of that list. His progress has been fantastic. It really has. Euro 2020 alongside Calvin Phillips. I thought Calvin Phillips started that tournament stronger, but the longer the tournament went on, the more Declan Rice really stood out as the better of the two midfielders. And then you've watched, I've watched plenty of West Ham this season and we saw this game last, was it last week? Two, well, last week at Old Trafford, we beat West Ham 1-0. Declan Rice was probably their man of the match. You saw how comfortable he was in possession with the ball at his feet. And there's so many stats that we can use to prove this. But what's your opinion on Declan Rice? Do you think that he is overhyped. Do you think he is overpriced? Do you think it's a bit of both? You let me know in the comments below. And let's dive straight into the stats and let me show you why I think Declan Rice could be that perfect midfield signing for United. So if we take a look at his uh, scouting report here on fbref.com, we can see where his strengths lie. Now, in terms of non-penalty goals, he's in the top 25% of midfielders. When it comes to assists, nearly the top 30%. That's not really where his strengths lie. You can see where the big one's down here. Pass completion, top 10%. Progressive carries. Now, this is the big thing I would say that I've been so impressed by when it comes to Declan Rice, which is a strange thing to say because he is, we are going to be signing him if we did sign him hypothetically. We're signing him as a holding midfielder. But his ability to not only, because we talk about progressive passing from that playmaker role in the number six position, we need that player to be a playmaker from deep, right? But he has a proper ability, which I haven't seen. I, th I think you'd probably say, I'd probably say he's the best at it. His ability to run forward with the ball at his feet. And his instead of doing progressive passes, he does progressive carries. But he never finds himself out of position. You go down here. That's the reason why his interceptions are so good. He's not really a, 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 a holding midfielder who sits there and holds for the tackle or holds for the block. He's somebody who will intercept the passing. He's, he's a very active player. That's what I would say Declan Rice is. And I think... In my opinion, you can really see him slotting exactly into where Manchester United had that gaping hole at the base of our midfield. So what I'm going to do now, and this is a very interesting one, let's take a look and compare his stats to Scott McTominay and Fred. Now, what these, these data charts are showing, if you look at the bottom, let me scroll down a little bit, it's, it shows you what percentage of the successful passes of that player are progressive. So across the course of the season, I'm not sure where this data is accurate up until. Maybe it's going to be the West Ham game. Maybe it will game before. But up until this point, Scott McTominay, nearly 9% of his passes there were progressive. Fred, 5%. Fred, and Fred overall, 778 passes. Then you've got um, McTominay, 653 passes overall. Let's quickly scroll over here to see Declan Rice's numbers. Now, the first thing you might say is Sam, even... Well, you've got Fred who's got 5.27. You've got Declan Rice who's over there and he's got 6.37. But Scott McTominay's on 9.18. But that's not the main thing I'm looking at here. Look at the overall number. McTominay, 653 passes. Fred, 778. Declan Rice, 1,114. His involvement, his activity, he's always there. He's always available. His movement, as I said, is quite incredible. If you look down here as well, look how heavy on the left-hand side. 
So Declan Rice is playing there in the left of a midfield two and, and driving forward, bringing the ball forward. It's what makes De uh, West Ham such a threat from the left-hand side. Tell you what's an interesting comparison. Look at this. Bruno Guimaraes, who's on his way to Newcastle, Look at his numbers. He's got the same, nearly the same amount of passes overall as Declan Rice, but he's got nearly 10% of his passes are progressive. I do think that Newcastle have got an outrageously good signing there in Bruno Guimaraes, but you never know whether or not he's going to settle in the Premier League. And I would say that's another reason why we'd have to have a proper conversation now about Declan Rice, because he's Premier League proven. He's ready. He's keen. He loves Old Trafford. As we saw from that interview at the start there, he loves playing at Old Trafford. It's one of his favourite stadiums. Declan Rice, really, as I said, I think if we're looking at all the players who played for England at Euro 2020, I've said this before, I'll, go, I'll say it one more time, hardly any of them have gone on to progress this season. So many of them have had Euro 2020 hangovers from the frustration of it that just haven't kicked on. Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire... And then Marcus Rashford up until that obviously last goal in the last couple of games, brilliant for him. But his form after his shoulder surgery, which he was out for a few months for, he stagnated. Saka, I haven't watched enough of Arsenal to know whether he's progressed or not, but no one's really been putting him in the headlines, so I think he's probably middling. Declan Rice, though, has come on quite a long way. And for me, I would definitely say that he now looks like the perfect midfield signing for Manchester United. Now, whether or not he's the perfect midfield signing price-wise is a completely different conversation. We'll get into that later in the video. But what I want to do now, so what we've done now, we've taken a look at his overall individual stats. What's he, what's he, where are his strengths and weaknesses? And we've seen how good he is, not only with his progression, I mean, progressive football, progressive passing, sorry. On paper, he's a little bit, Less than McTominay, but it's his sheer number of passes, his sheer involvement in the game. That's what United need as well. So what I want to do, ultimately, we want to get, we want to win the Premier League title. That's the aim. That's the aim of signing all these players. It's the aim of everything we're doing right now. So let's compare Rice to the best in the Premier League. And that will be Fabinho at Liverpool. That will be Rodri at City. And that will be Kante at Chelsea. That's, that, that's the player that United need. That's the player that all our three big rivals have. That's the player that we do not have. And let's take a look at the stats here. This is a per 90 stat across the Premier League so far. Declan Rice makes more tackles per 90 than Fabinho, Rodri and Kante. He makes more interceptions per 90 than Fabinho, Rodri and Kante. He makes more clearances per 90 than Fabinho, Rodri and Kante. He makes more blocks per 90 than Fabinho, Rodri and Kante. Let's take a look at his offensive stats here. He's got... As many assists as all of them combined. Obviously less goals, but that's not really his forte. Shots per game is pretty low. as his average. Dribbles. This is the big one. Look at that. 1.6. Kante is the only one who comes close. His ability to drive forward with the ball, whilst at the same time not being out of defence, winning those tackles, winning those interceptions, winning those clearances. It's what's impressed me so much about Declan Rice. He's a proper... He has the capability of a box-to-box -box midfielder, whilst at the same time, the proper discipline of a number six. He's never really out of position. If he is out of position, his recovery is excellent. He's a very, very well-rounded midfielder. We go down here, as I say, look, key passes per game, 0.8. Look at his pass success rate, 90.7. That rivals the best. Only Rodri is better than him. 55 uh, passes per game. Rodri obviously blowing it away with 83, but that's because Man City dominate the ball so much. Statistically, he not only matches up with Fabinho, Rodri and Kante, he beats them in a lot of the departments. And for Manchester United fans, you'd have to be excited about that aspect because we have to compare to the best because the best is where we want to get towards. And that's why I can just, it just makes sense now, I think, when you look at everything that United have and everything that United don't need, sorry, don't have, that's where someone like Declan Rice, I think, comes in. And we've, I think we've settled in the past in plenty of positions. I don't think we've settled on, on Varane. I think we got our main signing. I don't think we settled on Jaden Sancho. I think we got our right winger that we wanted, even if we haven't used him that much or properly or positionally, X, Y, Z. That's a different conversation altogether. But Rice, for me, I think strikes me as quite possibly the perfect midfield signing for this Manchester United team, our needs and what we don't have. And if we take a look at how we could set up, it's very simple. It's a straight 4-3-3 and it is Declan Rice at the base of that midfield. I could just see it working so well and I think you could too. The question that you have to ask is, will Manchester United pay the money that West Ham want for him? I'm unsure of that because let me know in the comments, right? How much do you think Declan Rice's price tag is now? 
If his price tag was 80 to 100 million last season, do you think his price tag has gone up? Do you think it stayed the same? I think if anything, it might have been got, might have gone up a little bit. But if we're looking at this system here, the weakness has always been that that area there. That area there, because Fred is excited to go forward. Bruno's excited to go forward. No one really holds it. Now you might say, Sam, that could be a, that could be an issue because Bryce Rice, sorry, is somebody who likes to bring the ball forward. So if Rice is bursting into this position here, is that not going to leave a massive gap there? And I would say, yeah, you're probably right. But that's when it comes to discipline. Because if Fred can see Rice moving forward, Fred can just drop and cover. And that's where Fred's good, actually. Fred is good at dropping and covering. Fred's not good at holding it completely on his own. But as a smart midfielder in that sense, I think Fred is good. And for me, that looks like, on paper, that looks like the most balanced United team I've seen in so, so long. And I'm not sure, as I said, this is where I want you to help me in the comments, okay? If, De if you don't think Declan Rice is the perfect midfield signing for Manchester United, who is? Now, of course, you know how much of a fan of Ruben Neves I am. I love Ruben Neves. I always thought that he would be a good signing for United, but lo and behold, we haven't signed him or, or even really been linked with him. Let me know what you think. I've just realised my water bottle's been in the corner of the shot the whole time. Maybe I'll have a drink. Ah, lovely. That would be the taste of victory if we signed Declan Rice, in my opinion. I think... He could be the midfield foil that we need. The mid, the final piece in that, in that. I'm not saying it's a complete squad, but when it comes to the whole, Declan Rice could fill it. I believe better than anybody else. Premier League proven. The fact that he's English does that change anything? No, it doesn't change anything at all. But the fact that he's Premier League proven, he loves Old Trafford. Yeah, I'll take both of those. Let me know what you think though. Declan Rice. Do you think he'd be the perfect midfield signing? If it's not Declan Rice, who would be? Let me know in the comments below. Because I think United are going to go after him big time this summer. That's my opinion. But you let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But Declan Rice, what do you think?